One of the things left to do this offseason is for the Eagles to try to figure out their cornerback situation. Because going into this season, your starting two corners are 33 and 31 years old. And with a draft as deep as this one in cornerbacks, it may be time for the Eagles to pull the trigger. Dallas still stinks. Yo, by the way, King Digby here and Darius Slay, 33 years old. James Bradbury, 31 years old. Jerry Jones, 9,025 years old. And did you know, by the way, it is his birthday today. Happy birthday, Jerry Jones, turning 9,026 years old. Uh, congratulations. Apparently, they're having a big party on his yacht as he turns 9,027 years old. And as he got up the stairs and they said, happy birthday, you're 9,028 years old. It must be great being 9,029 years old, Jerry Jones. But. When you look at the teams around the league, and when you look at these teams that are Super Bowl contenders, how many of these teams actually have cornerbacks, two starting corners that are over 30? This is a real problem and a real situation I think the Eagles are going to still have to fix. And it's early in preseason, and Howie Roseman, during his uh, meeting, you know, at the owners' meetings, uh, he kind of hinted that it's really early in the offseason, and there's some things yet to drop when it comes to these corners. So we got a lot to talk about because my personal favorite move for the Eagles to do in the draft would be to take a cornerback in the first round. And in this video, I'm going to get to explain my reasoning. But before we get into that, I want to talk about a couple number uh, changes that we have uh, for the Eagles. Rick Lovato, who wore 45, has now changed his number to 49. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to buy myself another Rick Lovato jersey since I have it in 45. Psych. I don't have it. What are you talking about? Um, Eli Ricks. We all love Eli Ricks. Uh, Eli Ricks showed a lot of promise as a rookie. I think this kid is going to be a player. He changes his number to 23. We all thought C.J. Gardner-Johnson was going to get the number 23. That's what he had when he was with the Eagles in his first stint. But he takes number 8. Mamba mentality uh, is what he said. So C.J. Gardner-Johnson wears 8. Eli Ricks now has 23. And that opens the door to the fact that Devin White gets his number 45. And you got to love this. I think this is a great start for Devin White. And let me tell you something. In order for Devin White to have a really good year, okay, we need these successes. We need these things to go his way. He needs to get his number. He needs to feel good. He needs to have the good practice. He needs to get, you know, good press. Whatever it is to keep this kid, his head focused, positive feelings, positive vibes only, because... Uh, I still believe he's a player and know everybody or not everybody though there's a lot of Eagle fans who were really down on this pickup and I was surprised really but a lot of people were really down on on this uh, pickup because they just felt like he's shot he's got nothing left he's not the same player that he was and when you look at him and you look at his dead you know it's not like he's 32 years old like I get it if he was 32 33 years old but he's 26 years old the guy's 26 years old uh, to me I think Devin White probably didn't handle the situation well enough in Tampa Bay, okay? Uh, if you guys remember, he, he was having all the success in the world, was up for a contract extension, wanted it, didn't get in it, then he requested a trade, didn't get that, and uh, after that, it, it kind of just went downhill from there in Tampa Bay. I don't believe, just in my own personal opinion, I don't believe that was a talent problem. I don't believe that's a talent issue. I believe that was a checked out issue. And I'm not saying that he handled it right. He probably didn't. And hopefully he's matured from that. Uh, he is 26 years old now. And that's pretty old. 26 years old. Very old. Very mature. I remember when I was 26 years old. I had five kids, I did everything right, you know, nothing uh, ever crazy, I never drank too much, I never stayed out too late, I never did anything wrong at 26, so I'm sure that, that Devin White's got it all figured out, but in all seriousness, uh, I'm very excited about this pickup still, and I think um, 
the way I see it is, all right, Devin White got his number. Good. That's what he needed. Good. Now he go out, have a good practice. All right, Devin White had a good practice. Boom. All right, he played good at pre All right, he had a turn of week one. Like, whatever we can do to get this dude playing at the level that I believe he still could play. And even if you look at where he was at his final year in Tampa, he's still better than any linebacker we got on this team. And the chances are, you draft a linebacker, he's still going to be better than that guy. He's going to be the best linebacker you have on this team next year. So, yeah, I know I'm rattling about a guy getting a number, but to me, when I look at Devin White, I want things to go positive for him so that we can build on that and it snowballs into a giant Pro Bowl year and then maybe we can talk about him getting an extension possibly. I think Devin White is going to be the steal of free agency. I think he's going to have a big year and I hope Vic Fangio puts him in the proper uh, positions. And that that's really what this whole thing is going to be about on both sides. The Eagles acquired talent. Uh, Howie Roseman made a comment. We are we are in the talent uh, you know, gathering stages with this team right now. We are gathering talent. And the truth of the matter is, you can have all the talent in the world. If you don't know how to use that talent, it isn't going to matter. And, and you know, you can have Saquon Barkley, but if they don't ever use him, you know, to me, if you're not using Barkley 20, 25 times a game, then you know what? It's going to, it's going to be bad for you. It, it, what's the point of signing him? Uh, if you have Devin White and you're not doing and playing things, playing him to his strengths, or if you have Reddick and you drop him back 30-something percent of the time into coverage, uh, you're not using these guys to their ability. And I judge a coach on this. Uh, can you get the most out of your players? Can you build a system, not so much what you want your system to be, but can you look at the team and the talent that you have on that team and then design your, your, uh, your game plan, your system around that? That's a good coach, okay? A good coach doesn't say, all right, this guy doesn't do this good, and this guy doesn't do that good, but I am going to go ahead and force him to do it anyways. That's that's stupidity. That's Chip Dip Kelly crap, man, okay? What I'm talking about is I want a coach that says, all right, Reddick does this well, Devin White does this well, we like to put you C.J. Garner-Johnson in this, uh, this way. All right, so... We're gonna we're gonna run this system and we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna we're gonna use Reddick in the pass rush. We're gonna blitz Devin White and we're gonna blitz more than I like to blitz, but that's what he does really well. Like that is what you want from a coach. And that's what it's gonna come down to. And I know I rambled on about it, but it's just true. The key to all this is gonna be those coordinators. Can they use the talent correctly? That's the key to this whole thing. It really is. Um now as far as I was saying about the secondary at the beginning of this video, when you look at you look at uh, Darius Slay and you look at James Bradbury, you have two guys over 30 years old, okay? And really, I don't know, I don't know how much you're going to be able to get out of them this year. I, I don't. Uh, I know how Roseman talked about uh, James Bradbury. He wants to have a rebound year. He wants to show that he still has something left. I'm sure he does. I, I really am. But to me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, that, that wouldn't stop me from getting younger at the cornerback spot. And really, the thing that you can do this year is you got a first round pick coming up. And if you look at some of the corners that are out there, okay, uh, Arnold, Mitchell, Wiggins, um, uh, Kool-Aid, uh, you got guys that could play. And you got guys that I think you legitimately could draft and wind up and wind up starting, starting, okay? So the fact that if you look at the Eagles and they've done so much for this team, but the one position they really haven't addressed is the cornerback spot. I think we're set up for the Eagles to possibly, and I'm not saying this is definitely going to happen. I'm not even saying this should be the favorite. But I think that this is the best chance that we've had in years that the Eagles will take a cornerback in the first round. They haven't done this since 02, and we're overdue. We are overdue. Now, 
if they go out and they draft a guy like Mitchell or Arnold or Wiggins, does that mean they got to move James Bradbury? Because that's going to be very hard to do. See, a lot of the problem with Bradbury is if you cut Bradbury before June 1st, it's going to cost you, I think, $11 million, $10, $10 million in cap space, something, something like that. If you wait till post June first, it drops down to six million in cap space. By that time, it may not matter because you have thirty something million dollars. But um, if I'm the Eagles, whether I have to trade James Bradbury, whether I have to keep James Bradbury, it's not going to limit me from going out there and drafting a corner in the first round. That's what I would prefer. That's that's what I want at this point. I want the Eagles to draft a corner. Now, we have to see how the draft falls, and it could fall in a way where it's like, nah, dude, this is the best player on the board. This offensive tackle is the guy you have to take. I don't know. But right now, looking at it, I just think if you took a cornerback, I, I legitimately think you have a first-year starter right off the bat, a plug-and-play player and that that should be the advantage that your offense is giving you okay with Barkley and being so good it, it should allow you to draft young defensive players and play them and let them go through the growing process you know so it's going it's going to be interesting to see exactly how the Eagles want to go about that do you know go about that but uh you know uh I don't know what they're playing with Bradbury but I don't think this thing is over yet. Now, they got Isaiah Rodgers. I think from what I've read and what they've said, he is probably more geared towards playing in the slot. That's the way they want to use him. Now, you still need outside corner help. I like Eli I like uh, Well, I like Eli Ricks, but I like, I like, um, I like Kylie Ringo, too, because uh, I think he showed that he could play on the outside. Now, let's say, for example, you go out and you draft Mitchell or Arnold. Okay, whatever. Whoever you want to draft that's a corner. But you draft one of those guys and you start them. Now, look how young your secondary is all of a sudden. Like, you've completely changed where you have two corners over 30 to basically being set up long term. You have uh, the rookie you draft, let's say it's Mitchell or Arnold. And then you have... Uh, Ringo, ready to take over for Slay when he goes. You got C.J. Gardner-Johnson. He's young. You still have Reed Blankenship. He's young. You have Eli Ricks um, coming in there. You have Isaiah Rogers. You have a very young secondary that you're not overpaying, and that's going to be together for a long time. Uh, this is the best year to take a cornerback in the first round that I have seen in a long, long time, okay? Um, just just to talk about Bradbury and his contract uh, real quick, um, here, here's, what, here, here's, what, uh, here's what John McMullen wrote. He said, Bradbury will turn 31 in August, and the Eagles will lose, would lose just under $11 million in cap space if they simply released him before June 1st, okay? That number goes down to a more tenable 6.1 million post June, so Roseman can remain patient as things unfold. So there's no rush to get rid of Bradbury at this point. I don't think you could trade him, but there's no reason why Bradbury should keep you from drafting a cornerback in the first round. And then possibly, you know, you get a guy that you really like, you then cut Bradbury post June 1st, or at worst case scenario, you, you let Bradbury start the season off, and then you replace him with one of these kids. I do think a Mitchell, a Wiggins, an Arnold, a Kool-Aid, I do, I, <laughs> Cooper DeJean, maybe. I do think these guys can start and start right away. So I think that of all the years that, that since O2 that we've been watching draft and stuff, I think... And I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying this is the best chance the Eagles have had to take a corner in the first round than I can remember. Will that happen for sure? I don't know. But I at least think there's a real chance this year. And I've thought that there's basically none for the last 15. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. Of course, don't be a dingbat. And remember, it's how we vision. We're all just living in it.
Oh, we had not time for one more play. The are we had one Yo, more. Yo, you got to be motherfucking kidding me. You got to be kidding me. Uh, we had not time for one more play. Look at this motherfucker what running. What are you doing? Running from what are you a... What doing? What was that bullshit? That is not right. Oh, that's some bullshit. What was that? We had enough time for one more play. But the referee screwed us. The brother screwed us. The brother screwed us. At least they fought back and tried. Yeah, you, 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 you literally... The brother screwed us. The brother screwed us. We had, we had one bad opportunity for one more play.